Good morning. Hope everyone's having a wonderful day this morning. A few announcements to start us out with. If you're visiting with us or with us for the first time in a long time, or if you are a member that needs information changed, fill out one of our welcome cards. Drop that off at our welcome center out in the Narthex on your way out of uh, service this morning. That way we'll have a record of your visit. Uh, youth tonight, we, the plan is to go ahead with it. Now, I know the weather's kind of iffy right now, and uh, if something happens and we have a big snowstorm or whatever, of course, you know, an inch of snow to me is like a snowstorm. So, um, But if something happens and there arises the need to cancel because of ice on the roads or whatever, there will be an announcement on Facebook and a text will go out to all the kids. Uh, next Saturday, the youth will be headed to Wintergreen for uh, snow tubing day. Uh, a lot of fun with that, so sign up if you haven't at the student center. Have a deacons meeting tonight as well. Let's open in worship with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this time that we can gather in your house. We thank you for the opportunity to come together as your people and worship you. And God, I pray that your spirit would come and indwell the hearts of all of your children this morning and make our worship pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand and turn around and greet one another as we open with our first song. All right, let's sing together this morning, everybody, because we believe. We believe in God the Father, and we believe in Christ the Son. We believe in the Holy Spirit. We are the church, and we stand as one. We believe in the Holy Bible, and we believe in the virgin birth. We believe in the resurrection, that Christ one day will return to earth. Holy, holy, holy is our God. Worthy, worthy, worthy is our King. All glory and honor are His to receive. To Jesus we sing because we believe. And we believe in the blood of Jesus and we believe in eternal life and we believe in the blood that frees us to believe the bride of Christ holy 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 is our God Worthy, worthy, worthy is our King. All glory and honor are His to receive. To Jesus we sing because we believe.
There's a place where mercy reigns and never dies. There's a place where streams of grace are satisfied. Where all the love I've ever found comes like a flood, comes flowing down. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in awe of you. I'm in awe of you. Where your love ran red and my sin washed white, I owe it all to you. I owe it all to you, Jesus. There's a place where sin and shame are powerless. Where my heart has peace with God and forgiveness. Where all the love I've ever found comes like a flood, comes flowing down. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in awe of you. I'm in awe of you. Where your love ran red and my sin washed white, I owe it all to you. I owe it all to you. Here my hope is found. Here on holy ground. Here I bow down. Here I bow down. Here arms open wide. Here you save my life. Here I bow down. Here I bow. Here my hope is found. Here on holy ground. Here I bow down. Here I bow down. Here arms open wide. Here you save my life. Here I bow down. Here I bow. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in awe of you. I'm in awe of you. Where your love ran red and my sin washed white, I owe it all to you. I owe it all to you. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in awe of you. I'm in awe of you. Where your love ran red and my sin washed white, I owe it all to you. I owe it all to you, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed my 
chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing The Lord has promised good to me, His word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. My chains are gone. Amazing grace The earth shall soon dissolve like snow The sun forbear to shine But God who called me here below Will be will be forever mine you are forever Brothers, let us come together, walking in the Spirit. There's much to be done. We will come reaching out of our comforts, and they will know us by our love. Sisters, we were made for kindness we can pierce the darkness as he shines through us we will come reaching with a song of healing and they will know us by our love the time is now come church arise love with his hand with his eyes bind it around you let it never leave you and they will know us by our love children you are hope for justice stand firm in the truth now set your hearts above Long after we're gone, and they will know you by your love. The time is now. Come, church, arise. Love with your hands. See with his eyes. Bind it around you. Let it never leave. And 
they will know us by our love. You may be seated. We will continue to worship through the giving of our tithes and our offerings. I am the vine and you are the branches. Remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Stay here with me. Remain in me. Remain in me. Cause apart from me, you can do nothing. So remain in me. Cause apart from me, you can do nothing. So remain in me. Thank you, Kathy. Good morning. This morning, uh, as we go into our time of prayer and meditation, just a, a, few, a few praises as we begin. So often we pray for things, and God blesses and answers our prayers, and, and, and we tend to overlook them, and, and that's, that's understandable at times. But I, I just want to celebrate a few things. Uh, congratulations, first of all, uh, to Nat and, and Jenny Crouch. Uh, many of you were here last night for their wedding. They were married here last night about 7 o'clock. We praise God for that. They met here in our church and uh, felt God leading to them together as a, ch- as a couple at our church. So we praise God for that. And also, we, we had a wonderful group at, uh, at the Blessings Ministry. They had the, the respite night out. I believe we had eight or nine uh, special needs uh, adults and children here. And uh, we had Oh, a bunch of adults here to help with that, and it was just a it was just a great night. So thank you for everyone that was a part of that, and uh, for those of you that are now aware of it, um, spread the word. It's a it's a wonderful ministry, and also tonight we also begin our divorce care. And we just praise God for the ministry that that has done throughout the years, and it will continue to do so. And I invite you to join me in prayer on that. We want to express Christian sympathy first of all to John and Bethany Moore. Uh, Bethany's stepfather uh, passed away yesterday morning, and then her mother, later in the day, had a heart attack. And so, uh, mother's doing doing well physically. Uh, they had a, pl- a stent put in, and, and uh, she's in the hospital in Roanoke, but continue to pray for that family. And of course, Carlton Harper, remember her uh, in the loss of her sister this past Thursday. Continue to remember with, in our church, people that are dealing with cancer and its treatments, Irma Fretwell, Luleen White, Danny Michaud. Also, uh, people that are in, in the hospital are also dealing with long-term illnesses or, or caretakers. Uh, among those, Phyllis Michaud, uh, Martha Earhart, Bethany Davis, Lillian Jacquier, R.W. Andrews, uh, Roland Ellen Carlton for their parents, and uh, Louis Cash, as many of you know, his, his back surgery was, was canceled. They were not able to do that last this past week. And so continue to lift uh, Louis and Lou Ellen up in prayer. And also, uh, I visited Sean Sweeney this week before he was able to, to go home. You know it's been a, been a long, difficult journey. That's, that's Melvin and Patsy Sweeney's son. Tuesday, be in prayer for he and his family. That's a, that's a big milestone day for them. That's when they uh, run tests, uh, come to their conclusions, and decide on treatment from there. Okay? We'll go into a time of meditation, and then I'll lead us in prayer.
Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. So many things to celebrate here at the church and what you're doing through your kingdom. So many things to lift up to you. So many things to, to bring before you as you draw us into your will as we enter into prayer with you. Father, we lift up to you those that have had celebrations this week. Some I announced, many, many other victories that I did not. Father, I lift up to you those that are dealing with cancer and have health issues, seeking answers and also working through those answers. Father, I lift up to you the caregivers as well. Father, I lift up to you and request peace, peace for our people, our church, our community, our nation. Draw us together and focus on you so they will know that we are Christians by our love. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Well, good morning. I'm going to start something new with you here for the next few months. And, and some of you already are aware of it. I've, I've talked to some of you. We, we have Scripture memory cards out uh, in the, in the, uh, the Narthex, uh, in the, the Visitor Center, and also it's on your bulletin. And it's the Scripture memory verse that I want you to work on this week. And listen, as a motivation, if you will come to me and say on Sunday or Wednesday that memory verse, ladies and gentlemen, hold on to your hats you will get a roll of Smarties because of how smart you are, all right? Now, the Scripture memory verse, and let's test the pastor here. Uh, I am the vine, you are the branches. If, if you will remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing, John 15 Five. And there's several versions, even within the NIV, some, some words a little bit back and forth. If, if you come close, you will get your smarties, all right? And that'll be the verse that we're working on this week. So anytime, I mean, after church, today, between Sunday school, say your verse and you'll get a roll of smarties. All right, so we'll be working on that. And also, uh, we'll start on another verse next week. Well, I encourage you to open up your Bibles and we're going to John the 15th chapter, and I'm just going to look at verse 5. We really don't have time to, to work on the context of it, but just but actually the, the context of it is, is really narrowed down into that one verse, that John 15, 5, that I just shared with you. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remain in me and I in him, you will be, he, will, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do Nothing. Now, that's some of you that are, are taking experience in God, you, remi- you, you re- recognize that as your first memory verse for the week. My wife has been teaching the, uh, some of the, our senior high students on Wednesday nights back, since back in September. They've got maybe about a, n- a month left of that course. And then, of course, Matt Bearclaw, I think, has taken about 15 adults through experiencing God on Wednesday nights, and, and they'll probably get done, oh, who knows, 2018, 19, sometime in that, no, don't worry, it won't take that, that long, but it, you know, sometime in the spring, but that's, that's, that's the memory verse from that, and what I'll be doing in my preaching, we'll take breaks from it every once in a while, but what I'll be doing in my preaching is that we will work with you on some of these basic concepts on how to know and understand the will of God. And why am I spending so much time on that? Well, if you are a Christ follower, following Christ, what your mission is, is to know and understand the will of God. Not what you see another church do, not what you think would be great for, for, for us to do for God, but what God would have you do. Let me share with you in, in, fair, in fairly brief fashion what that means from that verse. Let me ask you something. Have you ever seen God do things that only God can do? Have you ever seen God do things that only God can do? How do you know it's from God? Well, it's something that, that really only God can do. Sometimes it's, 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 it's big, banner-like, overwhelming, wow, praise God. We may, we may know and understand how it was done, but we can't believe it was done. And even more often, 
the things that only God can do happen introspectively, happen within our life, making changes internally that have ripple effects for the rest of our life. Only things that God can do. When we do things through our human wisdom and our human efforts, then the very best that we can hope for is human results. But when we put our faith in God, and when we do what He tells us to do, folks, there, there is no limit to what happens. Let me break that verse down for you just, just quickly. I am the vine, you are the branches. Now, some of you have lived in South Carolina before, and, and you know what it's like to be around pine trees, pine trees. Man, pine trees are just, particularly for somebody that was raised in Oklahoma, where, you know, when I, I think I've shared with you, when I grew up seeing telephone poles, I looked at them and I go, how do they make those things? Because there's no tree that goes that tall and straight in Oklahoma, and there's not. But when I moved to North Carolina, I saw those trees. And they have them in South Carolina as well. I had a stand of about 15 of them in my yard in South Carolina. But what's even quicker and more aggressive are these vines that grow up them. They, these vines, I don't know what they're called, but they'll grow up a, a, a pine tree so quick. And if you don't watch it, they'll wrap themselves around different parts of the pine tree and just kill sections of a pine tree. Eventually can't even kill a tree. Those of you that that are in parts of North Carolina where you've experienced kudzu, that's even 10 times worse. And what I would do, because I loved my pine trees, I would get to the base of that where that vine was, about six inches from the ground, and I would cut it right there. And then I'd go up another two feet, and I would cut that vine again, and I would pull that vine apart so that there wouldn't, there somehow it wouldn't, the vines wouldn't connect. And it wouldn't take long for that vine that was 20, 30. 40 feet wrapped around inside that pine tree to just dry up and die because and you know what what it is it it was getting its source its empowerment from the base of the vine yes it was its its fruition and its leafiness and, and most of everything that we saw was up in the branches but it could do nothing if it cut off its source at the base. Folks, if we believe what Jesus Christ said, and these words came from Jesus Christ, we realize that our source, our empowerment, our foundation for nutrition comes from the vine. The power empowerment comes from there. The fruition happens in the branches. And so, if we are to experience things that only God can do, we must abide in that vine. The relationship, the strength, and the empowerment must come from there. How does that happen? How how does a person do that? Well, as we talk about remaining in something, there's a relationship there in fact in your walk as a christian as you seek to be deepened as a christ follower what you must realize is that the relationship is the thing you and i were created for relationship you hear that from me practically every week the reason why it's because it's foundational for you to grow as a as a christian you know this Your best friend will not remain a best friend for long if you don't spend time communicating. I have a friend, he and I, Steve Monfrini, we got into some insane stuff when we were were growing up in Texas, and we still communicate with each other on Facebook, but we haven't really hung out for 40 years, and we've just, we're just not the same anymore. We, We don't abide together. We were joined at the hip growing up but we just have gone separate ways think of of people that you grew up with same way now hopefully your spouse 
you are abiding together. You get to know each other. You get to know what, what each other are thinking even before they say anything. There's, there, there, there's, there's a shorthand that you have with that person as you a, abide together. You were created for a relationship with God. That's probably the twelfth time you've heard that for me from, from me that today. But listen, as you abide in that relationship, it is God's will that you do that. This is how you recognize, you hear the voice of the shepherd when it speaks. Now, part of the rest of the verse. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. I talked with you about what it means to remain in me. But what does it mean to produce much fruit? Now, I want, to, I want to say something up front to you. Because very often, you may be in some Christian traditions that imply or flat out say that the more you do for God, the more obedient you are to God, the more He will love you. You cannot do anything to make God love you more than He loves you right now. Oh, you can disappoint Him. Oh, you, you can put a wedge in your relationship, but this God who is, is the author of what love is, you cannot make him love you any more or less than he does not right now. His love truly is unconditional. So let me just say that right up front. But you were created to produce fruit. Yes. You were created to produce much fruit fruit. And while there are inferences in this passage that talks about how he, he, he prunes away things that do not produce fruit, and, and, the, and you go to the, to, the, to, the, to the end of that passage, and it even talks about burning the unproductive uh, 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 branches, and some people may talk, refer to that as hell. What I'm talking about, what I believe, and you need to understand the, 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 the circumstances and, and your, 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 your foundations for theology on this, is that that what it's talking about is, is that, that you are not experiencing what you were created to do. Have you ever been given a special spiritual gift or something that you felt that you were really good at and you were separated from it? Were you happy for long with that? No. Frustrated. Frustrated with that. And so it is, if you are created, and you are created to bear much fruit, and you are separated from that, by your own drifting, by the way, you are in a place of frustration. This is why your spirituality, your spiritual life is frustrating for you, because you were created to, to produce fruit, and you're not remaining in the vine Therefore, you were falling short of what down in the core of your being, you know you should be. But what does that fruit look like? Well, you've probably, most of you have heard the fruits of the Spirit, Galatians 5, 22 through 23. Let, let, me, let me just read that to you very, very briefly. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Now, I can tell you, there are books written on this, these two verses. There are sermon series. You can buy t-shirts. You can buy banners and posters having these verses. It's, it's a big deal. It's, it's inspirational. It's what God calls us to be. It's, it's, it's in a very broad sense even though there's more details to it than that, in a very broad sense, this is, this is part of what the, the, the fruit that God wants us to produce has these hallmarks, these character traits. And let me tell you something. If, if we abide in the, the branches, I mean the vine, and we are the branches, and we get our empowerment from God, and this is the fruit that we are to, to experience, 
what you were looking at in Galatians 5, 22 through 23, you are looking at, in a broad sense, the very character of God himself. That's a powerful statement. And this is who and what God wants you to be in broad terms. Now, the specifics, how that fleshes itself out, well, guess what? You can't memorize a verse to find that out. You know what you got to do? You got to abide. You got to abide. Remember, the relationship is the thing. And here's something else I want you to walk away with. We think, and in many cases it's true, that maturity, as we mature, we develop independence. Well, that's true. You don't want to live under your parents' roof forever. Spiritual maturity involves dependence. The more spiritually mature you become, the more dependent you become to the Father. Final part of the verse. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Why are so many of our hard efforts and even our what start off as good intentions come to not or even go the other, other way on us and reverse on us? Well, so often it's because we do what we think needs to be done for the Lord without saying and listening and abiding in Him and being obedient to Him. And sometimes we, we even get the snapshot of, of, of the vision, and then we run off, and when we get into trouble, then we ask God to bail us out. Folks, abiding does not mean you pull it apart and come back together and pull it apart and come back together. Abiding means <laughs> abide. You separate that. You go off on your own. You seek to become spiritually independent. And you will find that you have no empowerment. And even worse, you find yourself into a ends justify the means mentality and approach to serving God. And it doesn't take long. And folks, I've seen this and experienced this many, many times. It doesn't take long for you to find yourself saying and doing things that you would never say, never do when you first understood the vision and direction for where God was directing you. But you broke apart, you broke the abiding, you went off on your own. And folks, that's where we fall into error in something that even started with the best of intentions. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Where are you in that abiding relationship? Is there, is there some brokenness that needs to come about, come about so that you can come together again? Is there a sin that, that, that you need to confess between you and the Lord? Or maybe you haven't even started in that relationship yet. Perhaps you've not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. What is God saying to you this morning? You are not here by accident. You are here according to His purposes. No man can hear from the Spirit of God and remain the same. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for loving us, for giving us a relationship with you if we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. But Father, you are constantly in the process of making us and remaking us, drawing us deeper into an abiding relationship with you so that we might produce more fruit to your glory. Father, it's our decision time. We surrender to you. We are a part of your kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I invite you to stand. We're going to sing hymn number 384, We Are One in the Bond of Love. Please stand. We are 
one in the bond of love. We are one in the bond of love. <clears throat> Our spirit with the spirit of God, we are one in the bond of love. Let us sing now every one. Let us feel his love begun. Let us join our hands. The world will know we are one in the bond of love. Thank you so much for coming to worship today at Memorial Baptist Church. Man, I encourage you, if you're not a part of a Sunday school class, start today. We have some great, great Bible teaching classes for all ages. In fact, for for many of you, we have several options. I encourage you to, do, to be a part of that. God bless you for coming here this morning. Let's close in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we have come together in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we go out as a people reflecting the love, the joy of Jesus Christ. Father, show us what it means to abide in you so that we might encourage others to do likewise. We love you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.